Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for some of the greatest toys with beginnings that have little, if nothing, to do with the toys they became. This is what you want to go in the battle with, right? <laughs> Number 10, Laser Tag. Players to stadium now. Players to stadium now. The first use of an infrared light and sensor system in toy form dates back to phaser guns put out in correspondence with the release of Star Trek The Motion Picture in 1979. However, the origins of laser tag began miles away from kids' birthday parties and boys' nights out. And we mean that literally, given that it began with the military's multiple integrated laser engagement system, aka MILES. Rather than train with real bullets, the US Army developed this laser tag system as a form of combat training for their soldiers in the late 70s and early 80s. It was in 1984 when we saw the open of the first laser tag arena. What are you kids doing in here? Nothing, Nothing Mom. Just, just playing, playing laser tag. tag. Number nine, color forms. Color forms, plastic pieces stick like magic. Harry and Patricia Kislevitz were artists in 1951 when a friend of theirs who made handbags gave them a roll of vinyl he didn't want anymore. What the Kislevitz discovered was that pieces of the vinyl would stick to their bathroom walls and could easily be removed and repositioned. You can pretend lots of exciting adventures with your imagination and Color Form's Incredible Hulk. They even left pieces in the bathroom for guests to use in creating wall art. Seeing how much fun they and their friends had with it, the couple decided that they had an actual commercial product on their hands. And they were obviously right, as over one billion Color Form sets have been sold. Color Form's plastic pieces stick like magic. Number eight, water balloons. Hey, sweetheart, if the prize is you, I'm a ready teddy. Well, get bent, turkey. <laughs> French foot was a serious problem for soldiers in World War I, who spent long hours, days, and weeks with their feet in cold, damp, and less than sanitary conditions. It's estimated that over 75,000 British casualties in the war can be directly related to the condition. Well, in the decades after the conflict, British inventor Edgar Ellington made it his mission to create a waterproof sock using latex and cotton that would protect soldiers from the aforementioned trench foot. Needless to say, the invention didn't work and started leaking water, which caused an angry Ellington to throw it down on the table. The ensuing explosion caught his attention and led to the first marketed water balloons, which Ellington called water grenades nades at the time. Is this what you people wanted? Huh? Huh? Come on out! May I propose an alliance? Ha! You could have just said no. Number seven, paintball. You get it all out of your system? <laughs> Almost. Could a Wall Street stock trader survive in the woods against a seasoned outdoorsman? That's what stock trader Hayes Knoll and outdoorsman Charles Gaines wanted to find out in 1981. The men saw a paint gun in a farm catalog and decided that would be the way to settle the argument. Hayes shot first and he missed um, and I shot him right in the butt. <laughs> Why a farm catalog? Well, that's because paint guns were originally invented to be used by loggers and cattlemen to mark trees and cows from a distance. There was never any thought of paint guns and paintballs being used on people. But after Nolan Gaines went at it, the path towards human paintball competition was inevitable. You know, and I think there's just going to be a lot of paint flying, really. Number six, Magna Doodle. Animals, spirals, pictures, and more. We own a Magna Doodle. A dustless chalkboard. That was the original idea behind what would become the Magna Doodle. You know, that thing hanging on the door of Joey and Chandler's apartment on Friends? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> The Pilot Corporation of Japan, yes, the guys that make the pens, wanted to create a dustless chalkboard that could be used by company employees in sterile environments. However, when someone visiting from the Takara Toy Company asked about purchasing the toy, Pilot had their light bulb moment and switched gears, creating the product on a vastly larger scale, marketing it to kids, and calling it Magna Doodle. I'm doodling here and I'm doodles there, two times I'm doodling up. Number five, Silly Putty. Always put your Silly Putty back in its egg or it will run slowly away. During World War II, rubber was scarce and a vital component of many wartime necessities from tires to gas masks. So while the American government asked its citizens to ration rubber, they also put money into finding synthetic rubber compounds to solve the shortage. While the credit for Silly Putty might be in dispute, there's no disputing the fact that it came out of synthetic rubber research. It might sound obvious now, but what a couple of researchers found acting independently, is that mixing boric acid with silicone oil produced the now iconic bouncy, stretchable material. It wasn't quite good enough to replace rubber, but it was perfect for whatever Silly Putty is good for. What picks up pictures from a newspaper and makes them silly? And if you stretch it, even sillier. Silly Putty. Number four, Super Soaker. You made a career out of this and spacecraft. 
amazing. One day in 1982, NASA engineer Lonnie Johnson was at home working on his idea for an environmentally friendly cooling system. In testing his invention, he connected a high-pressure nozzle to the faucet in his bathroom and turned it on. And I shot the stream of water across the bathroom and I, it was so satisfying. I thought, geez, a high-performance water gun would be a lot of fun. How that had anything to do with a cooling system isn't important. What is important is the hard stream of water that came out of the nozzle that day. Because when Johnson saw that, he didn't just see water, he saw great toy potential. After years of working on prototypes, in 1990, the Super Soaker was born. Well, actually, it was originally called Power Drencher, but the name was changed to Super Soaker in 1991. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Number three, Silly String. Indiana Pacer jerseys coming down. Everybody on your mark, get set, shoot! It was 1972, and Leonard Fish and Robert Cox were working on their invention for a spray-on cast. To get their creation just right, they had to find the perfect nozzle. Well, they ended up testing upwards of 500 different nozzles to find the one they needed. During the testing process, they came across one nozzle that created a fun string that would fly across the room. It didn't take them long to recognize the toyetic potential, and with a little tweak of the formula to make it less sticky, Silly String was born. Get some before someone gets you. Number two. Play-Doh. Cut all is facing bankruptcy when employee Joe McVicker learns uh, that putty is being used in school uh, art projects. Uh, it's actually play with this dough. We'd love to tell you that Play-Doh was invented by Homer Simpson. Get it? Dope! Oh. <sighs> but it wasn't. It was invented in the 1930s by Noah McVicker, who created the non-toxic putty as a wallpaper cleaner. Then, in the 1950s, nursery school teacher Kay Zufall read an article about how the aforementioned putty could be used for art projects. Right! Kids love to squish it, and squash it, and roll it! Well, the kids loved it. And guess who Zufall's brother-in-law was? If you guessed Noah McVicker's son, Joe, you're right! Zufall encouraged the McVickers to produce the compound for children, and she and her husband came up with the name Play-Doh. Pretend you're the chef making is the best. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Slinky It's, it's incredible! It's gonna be some kind of a record! Everyone knows the lyrics to the Slinky song, right? Slinky, Slinky, it's such a wonderful way to stabilize a ship's equipment in rough waters. Okay, so that isn't how the famous jingle goes, but it does describe what inventor Richard James was working on when he happened upon the Slinky. A spring took a step in the lab he was working in, and he looked at it, and he picked it up and tried it again, and it, it did it again, and he took it home to Mom. And he said, you know, there's something here. After accidentally knocking one of his stabilizer springs off of a shelf and seeing how it walked along the floor, James knew he had a cool toy in his hands. He spent the next few years finding the best metal and the perfect proportions, and his wife came up with the name Slinky. Sales were slow at first, but after James did a demonstration at a local store, the shelves emptied quickly. Gimbel's store in Philadelphia gave us the end of a calendar, and we had 400 pieces, and we sold them in 90 minutes. Which of these famous toy origin stories surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.